Welcome back. Well, now we're talking about uh, the ease of doing business. Nigeria, well, first of all, uh, we've got Dr. Jomoke Oduwale, who is the um, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Trade and Investment. Thank you for coming on this morning. But we've moved 24 places from 169 uh, to, that's 145 now. And I do remember at the time there were certain executive orders, so many things were being put in place. So is this a direct consequence or result of all of those actions that we have put in place previously? Well, morning everybody. Thanks for having us. Um, it is a direct consequence. It just shows that hard work and collaboration pays off. All the little tactical quick wins and things that we've been pushing to, what we did was, you recall, in January we identified the quick wins that we felt we could achieve in the next few months, we had a national action plan, a 60-day national action plan, and really a lot of government agencies pulled through, collaborating. We collaborated extremely well with the National Assembly, with state governments, Lagos and Kano, and here you see the results. Hmm. Well, what is the target? Because I know that we, we ranked better in 2008, uh, but now at 145. What's our target? Where are we headed? Uh, we're headed, we've said that by the end of this administration, we'd like to be a top 100 economy. And in the next 10 years, Nigeria should be and stay within the top 50 economies in the world. What indices would you say will point to the fact that uh, it is easier to do business in Nigeria now? So that's a very good question. What does it mean for businesses? You recall that about last year, even earlier this year, if we take starting a business, which is usually the one that gets so much attention, uh, around the country. It took upwards of three weeks to register a business. The process was manual. You had to have a lawyer whether you wanted it or not. And it was just quite tedious even to reserve a name, even to do a name search. Now, you can do all that online. You can even finish the process yourself if you want for under 20,000 Naira. This was something that took even the smallest entrepreneur over 100,000 Naira to register a business. And this is the birth of a company, the birth of an idea actualization of innovation. It jumpstarts any economy, so it's a very important one for us. We're delighted that now, within 24 to 48 hours, you can register a business in Nigeria. But uh, people are really concerned because um, a lot of businesses are coming up every other day. Mm -hmm. And uh, when these businesses come up, they are hardly even breathing before you have the, the uh, FIRS breathing on their necks as well. Wouldn't you say that negates, to an extent, uh, the survival of these businesses? No, actually, on the contrary, at the point of registration now, you can get a TIN number. What this does is that from inception, an entrepreneur doesn't have to worry about, am I properly registered with FIRS? What usually happens is that businesses start off just semi-structured, and then two, three, four, five years when you start doing well, then you get under the tax radar and then you have to pay arrears of taxes. It's a very uncomfortable situation. It's when you need a loan, when your tax clearance is being asked for. It's much better and tidier to get your TIN registration. Immediately you register your business and to know exactly what you're doing from there. So how are the other states coming on on this? Because uh, just Lagos and Kano, those are the yeah. other places that you've worked with. Well, if you look at the World Bank rankings. The World Bank ranks Lagos and Kano for Nigeria because as of 2013, Nigeria had a population of over 100 million. But we actually are working with all the states in the country and the FCT. Mm -hmm. We started this project in July. The Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment and I presented to the National Economic Council, also chaired by His Excellency the Vice President. And we shared our learnings with all the governors and they liked the idea of replicating some of the structure and reforms that the federal government has been pushing at the state level. So we've been collaborating with all states since then. Look, can we get specifics? Say you're collaborating with the states. Um, because I know if you want to get uh, some of the factors of production, for instance, if you want to get that acquired at land, mm -hmm. uh, maybe now that the government is talking about diversification into agriculture, I'd expect that a lot of people are looking for that piece of land to be able to cultivate. How well are the states working with you at the federal level to ensure that people, uh, interested persons so who want to buy into agriculture get an ease of getting that land? Well, you know, first of all, this is a federation. So each state has their own policies in registering property and construction permits, for example. Hmm. But specifically, we've worked very closely with Lagos and Kano states to improve the transparency. They have websites. You can submit documents online. 
things like sworn affidavit have been removed from by Lagos State for registering property. Simple things that can ease, just facilitate acquisition of land and registering of, of construction permits and registering of property. But what the other states are doing now, we started the project just in July. In August, we had the state reform champions meet with us in Abuja. We had a workshop taking them through. You know, it's a process, and you've been with us on this journey at the federal level. So we started at the state level in, in um, July. We have Lagos and Kano able to present. And some states have been working with NIPC already to get some of these processes in place. But it's a structure. You have to map out your reforms. You have to identify your comparative advantage and the problem spots. Because you know the World Bank ranks Nigeria at a subnational level every four years. And we're going to be ranked next year, 2018, whether we like it or not. So that was part of the pitch to state government that whether we like it or not, Nigeria will be ranked. We were ranked in 2010, 2014, 2018, we will be ranked. It's much better to self-assess, to take your assessments, to pick the trouble spots and to work on them, even internally, without waiting for external pressure. Okay, so we moved up about 24 spots. Yes. Um, <laughs> you find that as a very major achievement. But mm. what's the plan to get us moving further, and how long do we have to get to that next level? Yeah, so... Very good question, and that's really what I would like to focus on today because, you know, success can have a way of distracting. And as a team, we're really determined that even, you know, we're not there yet. It's a journey, we like to say, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So you recall a lot of the things we did in the first 60-day National Action Plan. We got CAC's portal stabilized. We got um, access to credit, which I'd like to talk about because that was really significant. But right now, we're on a second National Action Plan from the 3rd of October, which will be ending on the 1st of December. And the main thrust of this 60-day National Action Plan is to drive momentum. And we'd really like Nigerians to know more about this. You know there were the executive orders, mm -hmm. particularly Executive Order 1 on transparency and efficiency. So the more Nigerians know, for instance, at the airport and seaport, there's a single interface and know exactly what to expect through that experience, then they can demand their rights and the reforms will be consolidated properly.